What's up, Cal Kang? Welcome back to some mechanics and materials. So what do we have here? Well, we have this steel rod, right? And what it has is these three parts. So from A to B, it's a, a hollow rod, and its diameter is 40 millimeters with a thickness of five millimeters. Then it's connected here at B to this inner rod of 20 millimeters diameter, and that goes all the way up to D. But then also from B to C, there's this hollow, same diameter, same uh, basically thickness as A to B, uh, but it has a torque of being applied to the end of it. So we want to find the angle of twist at D at the end of this rod here. So let's go ahead and solve for that. So the angle of twist formula, what's that going to be? So angle of twist is equal to the sum of T L over J G, right? So let's look through each one of these. Torque, we need to find the torque in each section. So the sum means that we're going to add up all the sections that are contributing the angle of twist of D. And so what are those sections going to be? Well, A to B is connected to D. So if this AB gets twisted, then so is D. So we need to concern the twist of AB. And then if we look from BC, well, BC, if you twist BC, that's not going to make a difference on how much D gets twisted. So that's not going to be part of it. But this thin rod from B to D, that gets twisted. That's going to be part of the twist of D. So this is going to be for AB and BD. Those are the two ones we're going to have together. So L is the length, that's really easy to find, each one is 0.4 meters long. J is the polar moment of inertia, we're going to need to calculate that. And then G is the modulus of rigidity, I think. <laughs> modulus of something, right? That's a constant, we can go ahead and write that down. I'm pretty sure it's 75 GPA. Alright, so that's one thing we know. So let's find the torque in each section first. So let's start with AB. So what's it going to look like in AB? Well, this, there's these two torques acting, and they're acting on the free end. So whenever these torques are acting, they're going to get carried down to AB, right? If you twist this rod, it's going to be applying that torque to AB as well, because it's getting connected. Same with this rod here at C. This too is twisting, and that's going to also twist AB. So to do that, we need to add these torques together. So torque AB, it's going to be basically the sum of the torques. So how do we want to do it? Well, let's look at this one. This 60 newton or this 60 newton meter force is going counterclockwise. So let's make that positive. So we're going to add 60, and then we also have this 150 newton meter force going clockwise. So that's going to be subtracted, right? Because they're going opposite directions. It doesn't really matter which one you make positive or negative, but they have to both be going different directions. So for this, we're going to get negative 90 newton meters for that torque in AB. Then we have to look at section BD, right? Because that's the other one. So BD is getting this 60 newton uh, meter torque applied, which is pretty easy to tell. But how about this 150 newton meter one? Well, it's actually not getting applied to the system here. It's getting applied to this outer one, which is twisting AB, but it's not gonna make a difference on the twist of BD. So the twist of BD is just gonna be equal to 60 newton meters. And let's make sure that there were different directions, right? This is being rotated. This total twist is going counterclockwise whereas the total twist in A is going clockwise. So this needs to be 90, this needs to be positive 60. All right, so we have that. We can find the lengths. Now let's find the polar moment of inertia. Uh, I'm doing the right one, yeah. So the polar moment of inertia, there's gonna be two different ones, right? There's gonna be this thick rod that's thick, or that's, um, that's hollow, and then we have this solid rod that's thinner. So we need to find them for both. So let's start with AB. So polar moment of inertia AB is equal to the equation is pi over two, diameter outer to the fourth minus diameter inner to the fourth. So let's plug in the numbers for this. So we're gonna do pi over two. So outer diameter, or outer radius, we're not doing diameter now, we're doing radius, is 40 millimeters in diameter, so it's gonna be 20 millimeters. So 0 0.020 to the fourth. Then we have to subtract the inner radius. So we know that the thickness is five millimeters, so that means that that's gonna be going 20 minus five. It's gonna be the inner radius, so 0 0.015 to the fourth. And then you're gonna find that the polar moment of inertia of AB is 1.72 times 10 to the negative seventh. And this is in meters to the fourth. Okay, so then let's find the polar moment of inertia for BD. J, E, D. Now this equation, pi over two, now instead of diameter or instead of outer radius minus inner radius, there's only going to be one radius because it's solid. So we're just going to do radius to the fourth. So we know its diameter is 20, so it's going to be 0.010 to the fourth. Now if you do this, 
you get 1.57 times 10 to the negative 8 meters to the fourth. Okay, so then now all we have to do is put it all together. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so angle of twist. So let's use the formula. So we're adding it up. So let's start with AB. So we're going to add the torque in AB, which is negative 90, times the length of AB, 0 0.4 meters. Then divide it by the polar moment of inertia of AB, 1.72 times 10 to the negative 7. And then um, what's left? The modulus of elasticity, 75. So it's in GPA. We need to convert that to just Pascals. So we're going to multiply it by 10 to the 9th. All right, so this is our first half year. Then we need to do it for BD. Uh, yeah, so then we're going to add the next one. And this is a positive 60 torque, so we're going to add the 60 torque. Then we're going to do the, the length. So the length of BD is the 0 0.1 meters plus the 0 0.3 meters. So it's going to be 0 0.4 again. Then the, modulus, or the polar moment of inertia, 1.57 times 10 to the negative 8. Then we got to multiply that by the modulus of rigidity, not elasticity if I said that. So this is 75, and then again 10 to the 9th. Okay, so then we did all of this, and all we got to do is put it in the calculator, and you're going to find that that is equal to 0 0.01758. But when you get this number, this is going to be a radians, and the book wants it in degrees. So if you want to convert to degrees, we're going to multiply by 180 degrees over pi. And you're going to do that, and you're going to find that this is 1.01 degrees. And that's our final answer for the angle of twist. So there we go. Cool problem, right? Uh, so it's really just about putting everything together, right? You just got to go through all the steps to figure out every part of this equation. And so if you're not getting the hang of it yet, feel free to share my playlist. I have a whole bunch of problems very similar to this one on angle of twist, on torque, how to find all of that. And yeah, if you uh, stick around for the next video, I'm going to be solving 5.55 which we're going to find the angle of twist of point C this time, so it's going to be a little different. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.